Well, the internet tells me that uh, the FF code means that you either have a bad motherboard or a bad CPU. I'm hoping that there's just a bad connection, so let's go take it apart and see if we can't fix it. Well, I don't see anything that out of place. I mean, there's a label here, but I highly doubt that would be causing any problems because it's not really conductive. There's a little bit of dirt. I guess we'll blow it out. What I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna say, let's take off the heat sink and uh, open up the uh, CPU and close it back down to see in case something shifted over time, the expanding and contracting, maybe made something walk. Um, I wouldn't know how to test the motherboard, but uh, if cleaning this doesn't work, I have another one in the warehouse too. Well, I realized something while I was cleaning this. This fan seized up, just like the fan on this uh, rip that I replaced a couple months back. So, this has probably definitely been overheating, but uh, still shouldn't, shouldn't break anything. Now, before I throw another used fan in here, um, I just want to power it up and see if it'll boot. I guess not. Okay, so this was the, the problematic one that I pulled out and I have my spare in there. I do find this interesting because my network lights and communication with the press are on and blinking and they weren't on this machine, but I still have the FF code. Uh, what to do? Nope. That yeah, just went back to FF. That's after I plug it back in for a little bit. Let's see if I have another one of those cables. Maybe that one's bad. Oh, well now it goes to zero, zero again. Strange. I also saw online that it's normal to go in and out of the FF during operation, but if it hangs up there, it's, there's a problem. So maybe this one is, is normal and it's just connecting which means I either have a CPU or a motherboard problem here. And then my next question is, do I want to try and fix this one or just let that one on there and then uh, get back to printing? And if I let that one on there, can I pull the hard drive out of this one and put it in there so I have all the information? Well, it doesn't really matter. I can send the jobs that I'm working on on here. Hmm. Let me think about that. Nope, it's connected now. Well, that just means I, I need to try and fix the other one. Well, I used the USB tool to make a USB drive that I can reinstall the operating system on the, the Fiery because I think it's the hard drive. It was clicking funny, and then it, I hooked it up to my computer, and it wouldn't really run. Then I turned it on its side, and then it started spinning up. So I think it might be a hard drive that's on the fritz, but who knows? Could be motherboard or CPU too. I, I don't know because now I've, I just hooked it all up and it's running. I can connect to it and you know, all my jobs are here and everything looks fine. It's very slow, but here's another weird thing I don't understand. 
my papers are all messed up and like none of my papers are on there so I don't know what that means oh and by the way thanks to whoever when I did a video about the overheating fiery thanks to whoever mentioned about they had an FF code and it turned out to be the hard drive because I remembered that and it was kind of in my brain like and then I went back and I looked at the comments so man this channel is great I'm learning so much still doing weird things so if I go into the controller oh now it, that came up it just seems extremely slow You know, I can push buttons, and it's probably thinking, and it eventually will load. But it just takes a really long time. Okay, I'm not sure how I'm going to show you the hours, or actually days, that I've been scratching my head trying to fix this rip. Uh, because I could not reinstall a new hard drive. And my problem ended up actually being a, a USB drive. It just wouldn't work on the one. And I, I tried a second USB drive for the boot USB tool and it worked. So this is how I reinstalled a new hard drive in this rip. This AO error is the error that I kept getting um, with this USB drive. This, I made a... Uh, I downloaded the, the version uh, correct for this machine and I could not get this thing to load. This should automatically load and then start uh, reinstalling the software on the hard drive. So I hooked up a screen and you're gonna need to get an HDMI converter for in here. And I found out that it always stopped at booting the kernel, which I was thinking, well, maybe I have bad memory. Maybe it is a bad motherboard because of things that I was reading online. I tried another USB tool and it worked. So this is how you reinstall a new hard drive into your RIP and format it. So you're gonna to have to download the, uh, the tool or the USB creator from Fiery as well as the .io files that you're gonna to need to install on here and take care of all of that. Once you have this, it's pretty simple. I unplugged everything and you need to switch this one dip switch for, that is normally off for one to on. So switch that up, put your USB drive in here, power it on. And it is going to do uh, some numbers here and that just means it's working and it'll eventually get to a point where either it says C1, C2, C3 or it's going to show you an error code. And right now I have the original hard drive installed so uh, we should get the error that means that we can't uh, format this hard drive because the hard drive is indeed bad. And it is normal to get this FF code uh, for just a little bit through the booting cycle here. Um, but uh, eventually we'll get to a repeating EE and then two more numbers. Oh, well, I'll be a son of a gun. Oh, that's right. I need to re-remember it. So it is going to attempt to format this hard drive, but eventually it will get to an error where it is unable to format the hard drive. And the, uh, FYI, this, this message right here, the C1, C2, C3, means that it is working. So that's what you wanna look for once you have your USB tool in there and it is running. It, this is just the way it always is. Well, not always, but sometimes it's just the really simple thing that is screwing up the whole process because I spent days swapping out CPUs, switching RAM around, power supplies, different hard drives, and I could not get that thing to work. And now it works. And now I'm gonna show you the error for 
unable to format the hard drive. So when you get a 43 error, that means you're unable to format the hard drive. Uh, and that means you got a bad hard drive. So go ahead and pull that sucker out and uh, put a new one in. So I have the new hard drive in here already, but uh, in order to remove that, you just take these two screws out and this whole apparatus pulls out. I opted to put a solid state hard drive back in. Uh, it's still a 500 gigabyte hard drive and uh, just figured that we'd get better performance out of that. So this sucker's no good. Once you have your new hard drive in there, go ahead and turn your machine on and it will boot up and go through the C1, C2, C3. And then when the install is complete, it's gonna power off. So I've already uh, formatted this hard drive correctly. So I'm just gonna close it up and we're gonna hook it back up to the C3070 here. We should be back in business. And as you can see here, the FF will show up. There's a good hard drive in there, freshly formatted. So uh, just wait a little bit longer and you're gonna get the zero zero, which means you're good to go. Oh, that's a great feeling to see that. Oh, it's still, I guess it's still booting. But we are back in business. I need to unfortunately reload all my paper settings but that is actually really simple okay so then we go to tools and setup we should be able to log in and the default password is capital F I E R Y dot one Go ahead and log in there. And it's all automatically got an IP address that I want to go ahead and change this to used C3070. Save changes, reboot. Now this whole debacle too makes me want to back up every single rip so I have an image uh, to start from which is really easy I guess I should probably figure out how to do that and make a video and show you how to do that system rebooted the controller light came back on so now let's add it to our command workstation here right here used C3070 add and the default password. Oh, that's, that's so nice. So then what I wanna do is, I'm gonna connect to my other 3070 here, and we're gonna go to paper catalog, and then up here, export all. We'll just save that to the desktop. And then go back here to the used C3070, paper catalog, import, replace existing paper catalog. Do you wanna replace? Yes. And that imports the paper catalog that I have saved on this press to that press over there, which is really nice. And they're, they're identical. Well then, I just need to calibrate this thing and I got some stuff to print. What do I got here? Okay. Let's see if it's all gonna be there. Recall, yep, it's already populated. I wanna put 12 point C1S in there. There you have it. Back up and running. I thought I had a boat anchor there for quite a while, but uh, every once in a while, my stubbornness actually pays off and uh, we get something fixed. So 
Thanks for watching. Hopefully this helps you out if you're in this same predicament. Don't give up. Try a different USB drive. See you on the next one.